our first guest two years ago. He was on tour. We're totally cracking up, too. That's hilarious. With his masterful book, The Crossover, a sports novel written in verse. We instantly love this guy. He's a Newbery award-winning poet, educator, and best-selling author. He was fantastic. That's right. We are so excited to welcome back Kwame Alexander. Good morning to you, Kwame. Woohoo! Thank you for having me. I remember that. We had a great time together. We did it, it have a so great good. time. I almost wore the same shirt today. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. I hope you watch it in cold water. This. Yeah. Okay. Cold water for you. We got to show our viewers this. We loved you so much. We actually put you in our promo for the morning blend. Every single morning, viewers can see you right in our promo. I love, I love this show. I'm coming back. I'll see you tomorrow. The morning blend. <laughs> yeah, we know that, Kwame, we know since you're joining us virtually that you couldn't see the, the clip that we yeah. just played, but it's sound full um, of you sitting here on our yellow couch. We're bummed that you're not here in person, of course, today, but it was you saying you were going to come back, which we love. But we absolutely loved getting to know you, and you do travel like a rock star. Yeah, not so much these days. I'm, I'm on lockdown like the rest of us, and I got to tell you, it's I'm living a writer's dream in the midst of a nightmare. I have nothing but time. So I'm writing up a storm and I'm traveling a lot via Zoom, which is cool. I still get to see kids. Well, that's what, yeah, that's kind of what everybody's living these days. So that's interesting. So no rock star bus at the moment, no traveling, but you're still working with the kids. In fact, we know that you used to write at coffee shops, but you now have a new writing studio. Yes, it's, it's, it's it has a loft. I've got, got heated floors. I've got reclining chairs. It's like basically I wrote the crossover, which you know about, in Panera Bread. So I wanted to create yeah. my own Panera Bread at my house. So that's what my writing studio is. And it's where I create. That studio is so cool. I love that. I'm wondering how this pandemic has affected you and your family. Um, my daughter has learned how to skateboard a lot. I've, I've, she and I have played softball. We bonded. Like, imagine having to be with a 12-year-old nonstop, 24-7. No school to break it up. <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. I found out things about my kid and about myself that I never knew. But I think ultimately we've all bonded. You know, we've we've gotten rid of a lot of the distractions, and we've we're we're, we're you know reduced or not reduced. But we are focused on sitting at a table and playing Uno or Monopoly or talking and those things that we used, I used to do as a child with my family that we kind of got away from because of all the distractions. But we're being forced to sort of find our way back to that spirit of family um, that I think is pretty beautiful. It's true. And I think that's such a gift. I mean, parents are talking about the amount of time that they've gotten during this time is equivalent to like eight, nine months worth in, in normal life. So I think it's truly a special time, like you mentioned. Um, we wanna get to the panel that you were part of in just a second, but before we do that, you know, the, the world is changing in, in many good ways as well, but it's divisive and it's tough too. So we wanna kind of uh, talk to you a little bit about a time that maybe you've experienced being a target or a victim of racism, if you could share that with us and our viewers. I mean, I think as a black person living in America, you're a target and you're a victim pretty daily. And it's it, sometimes it's macro and sometimes it's microaggressions. I mean, it could be, you know, my my high school English teacher, my AP English teacher uh, assigning us to write a 30 page thesis paper in order to graduate on any novel in the English language. And I had read Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe many times, so I wrote my paper on that, and it was a pretty good paper. And she gave me an F on the paper, and when I asked her about it, her response was the paper was excellent. It was college level. It was so good. There's really no way you could have written it. Oh. So her level of expectations or her limitations of my possibility could have dictated my future. And so how many black children, you know, have to deal with that level of uh, educators and, and adults in their life who don't know their worth? Fortunately, I had parents 
who came up to the school and the grade got changed to an A. But what about all the children who don't have the parents to come up to the school? How are they going to know their worth? And I just posit that we have to do better as adults in recognizing the humanity of the children who are in our lives. We have the potential to, to create and mold and shape beautiful human beings or destroy them. So um, racism is, is, is a daily thing. And I think, you know, the goal is to equip black children with the tools to be able to understand that because of the way someone treats you, it, it, says, it says nothing about your self-esteem. It says more about their inhumanity. And so you can't mm -hmm. be defined by other people. It's such a great point. That's a disappointing example. And, um, but, I, but I think it's different than some of the other examples that we hear of racism. It's so important that we're finally having these very honest conversations about it. So I appreciate you sharing that. And I, I kind of wonder, do you see these talks about systemic racism and everything that's going on now changing? Uh, do you think a year from now we'll still be talking about it? Do you think America is ready and, and real change is, is on the horizon? I'm a hoper. I'm a dreamer. I write kids books. Like my whole life is about helping young people imagine a better world. So I'm filled with hope about opening a world of possible. So I just turn the question back on you because it's really not a, a big sort of overarching, is the world going to change? Are you going to change? Am I going to change? Are they going to change? Because really, if we all sort of begin to do some of these things that embrace the full humanity of, of black people, of, of people of color, um, we begin to embrace our own humanity and we all become better, and then the world does change. So if we're all, so you, you ask the question, are we still gonna be talking about this? Are you still gonna be talking about it? Like, that's the question, you know? If, yeah. Are we gonna still be talking about it? It's on us. We are the people who are responsible for making this change that we claim we want for our children. It's not them over there, it's us. Such an important note. I know you have a new book coming out in the fall. It's a collaboration with James Patterson. Um, it's called Becoming Muhammad Ali. Um, and I know you have this partnership, um, this great title that's exciting. I hope that you will join us on the Morning Blend, hopefully in person if things change enough. But congratulations on all your wonderful work and this upcoming piece of work that you're collaborating on as well. So great to see you, you, Kwame. Thank you. I'm excited about Becoming Muhammad Ali. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Just promise us you'll be back to talk about that next book. And bring the bus. Oh, <laughs> yeah. If we, if, if we can get out with the bus, guarantee we will. I'll leave you from a quote from that book, which I think applies to what we've been talking about. Um, Muhammad Ali said, I am the greatest, not because I am better than anyone, but because no one is better than me. So we can all be great. We got to appreciate each other's greatness. You're great, and that's why I can't wait to come back on your show and be great with you. Yeah! <laughs> I see it now. It's a new promo, right, Tiff? Yep, there it is. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kwame. We appreciate it. You are fantastic. Yeah. Love seeing you. Stay well and your family, too. Want to share this. Right. Kwame's website is kwamealexander.com, but if you want to hear him, all you have to do is Google Kwame and the Undefeated, which is great.